What else can we learn about the Holy Spirit? That's what we're going to talk about today in John 16. Right, we're going to continue on this very long day or long meal. This is a very long meal where Jesus now is going to tell us that He's saying all these things to keep you from falling away, to keep the disciples and to keep us from falling away from the word of God, that this message that we're getting is going to be so that we can keep going and be strong in the word. I think things are going to get tough. You know, they certainly did for the disciples. They get tough for us, too. And so he wants us to be able to stay strong with his word because he says, they're going to put you out of the synagogue which means they're going to excommunicate you. You're not going to be able to worship there anymore. And the hour, the time is coming. Whoever kills you will think they're trying to do so in the name of God. They're doing it as a service of God. And when they do these things, it's because they don't know the Father. They don't know me. I've said these things to you, but that time is going to come. He is telling them tough times are going to happen and it's going to happen to you too. Oof. And he says, I didn't talk about all this right from from the very beginning, but now I'm going back. I'm going back to the one who sent me. I'm going back to God the Father. And none of you asked me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you. You know, they have sorrow in their hearts. You know, he knows what they're thinking. I wondered if they were perplexed, if they were confused. But he's saying, you have sorrow in your heart. But I tell you, it is to your advantage that I go. Because if I didn't go, the helper, the Holy Spirit wouldn't come to you. But when I go, I'm going to send him to you right away. So he comes and he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness judgment concerning sin. Because they do not believe in me concerning all of this righteousness and sin. And they don't, right? The world doesn't follow Jesus when it talks about sin. I want to live with my boyfriend. I want to steal from my company. I want to do this and I want to do that. And they want to do all these things, right? They don't care about sin or the things that God talked about in sin, but they're going to convict the world. Jesus says, you're not going to see me any longer. The ruler of this world, that's going to be the devil, is judged. He's already judged. He's already found guilty, right? But I wonder, too, if that's our place of, you know, convicting people of sin. When we see the world, I think, falling around in sin, I say, gosh, you, don't you even see what you're doing, that you're falling away from God? How can you have a wonderful, blessed relationship if you're sitting in that relationship? Or how can you feel blessed in your retirement if you're stealing from the very company that employed you, that trusted you? What's going to convict people of that? And we know it's going to be the Holy Spirit. Is that all these things to you? You can't bear them now. I bet you, I bet you their hearts and their minds and everything is swimming. When the spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you in this truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, you know, I think from God the Father and from Jesus, he will declare about these things to come. He'll glorify me. Again, the Holy Spirit's favorite topic is Jesus. Just talk about Jesus. He loves talking to about it and he will glorify it. All that the Father has is mine. And therefore, everything I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is all going to come to you. And I wonder, too, with this conviction, I guess I was just thinking about this, is that, okay, so you follow the land of atheism and you say, we're all just chemical and electrical meat bags. We have no bearing in this world. There is no right or wrong. There's no truth in this world. It's just what we make up. But how is it we all know the things that we should and shouldn't be doing from the very beginning of time? We get it. I think that that is part of it. This world is written in the world. We see it. The Holy Spirit convicts everyone of it. It is obvious and apparent. And that's what the Holy Spirit is doing is he is convicting. This word convict means to expose, you know, because we can think of it in a legal term where you're convicted of a crime. But reprimanded, rebuked, exposed, reproved. (laughs) So you get the idea that that's what the Holy Spirit is doing because this word of God is just written in the world and the Holy Spirit is what's going to convict people about righteousness. And I think you see that, that there is this natural feeling of what is right and wrong in this world. And people, they turn away for that. Your sorrow will turn into joy. You know, I love that 
that's the next chapter in ESV. You know, you're not going to see me in a little while. And then again, you'll see me again. And some of the disciples said to each other, which is funny because you think they would have learned at this point that when they start muttering to each other, Jesus hears it anyway, a little while and you'll not see me again. And a little while you'll see it. And so he repeats it because I'm going to the Father. What does that mean in a little while? And so they were confused by this. And Jesus knew they wanted to ask him. So he says, you know, this is what you're asking to yourself again. Jesus always knows what you're thinking. You're not going to see me and then you will. Truly, truly, I say to you, you'll weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. Doesn't it feel that way? That when we look at the world and we lament and we're sad for everything that's going on in the world, the world is happy for it. There are people celebrating for the sadnesses of the world, the places where cruelty and hate and war and murder happen. And then there's people rejoicing about it. We'll be sorrowful, he says, but then it'll turn to joy. And now we go back to something that was said in the Synoptic Gospels. When a woman gives birth, she's sorrow because her time has come, her hour has come. But when the baby's delivered, she doesn't remember any of that pain and anguish. All she knows is the joy that a human has been born into this world. Same thing. You're going to have sorrow now. I'm going to see you again. And your hearts are going to rejoice. No one is going to take this joy from you. And in that day, truly, truly, he says, I say to you, whatever you ask in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you'll receive so that your joy may be full. And I think in the end, it matters that God answers prayers. He answers our prayers. And so he wants us to gather that joy. We're going to have that joy. He wants us to be full of joy because of this. And at the very end, he says, you know what? I said all these things to you in figures of speeches. You know, he's saying, I know this has been language I've used, but right now, he's the hour is coming when I'll no longer speak to you. Time is coming. Time is running out for us. And in that day, you'll ask for things in my name. And I don't even have to ask my father on your behalf because the father himself loves you too. And because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God and that I came from the Father, I've come into this world and I'm leaving right now and going to the Father. And so the disciples, you know, you know it's like, what is he saying? Oh, no. And so you're not using figurative speeches right now. And, and that's why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus says, do you now believe? This is kind of what he said to Mary, right? When Lazarus died, you believe, behold, the time has come. The hour is coming and indeed it has come. Now's the time. You'll be scattered each to his own home and will leave me alone. Yet I'm not alone for the father's with me. I have said these things to you so that you may have peace in the world and you will have tribulation, troubles, woes. Take heart. I have overcome the world. That's what I always say, you know, when you believe in Jesus, the idea is, I read the back page of the book. I know how this story ends. When there are times we have to take heart, Jesus has already overcome the world. He's already won. This fight is over. There's no more game. There's no more football game. The, the game is already done. The score is already over. The time just has to run out on the clock. He knows they're going to be scattered because he said it when the, sh- the shepherd is struck the sheep will scatter. Shepherd is about to get struck, but he knows that they are believers and so that he wants them to have that peace. Whoa. All right. Well, what I'm going to meditate on this week, this idea that Jesus tells us all these things. He's telling the disciples, but we are going to have the word of God. We're going to have the scriptures of God. So he is telling us this too, that we should have joy, that we should not fall away. He's saying this also that we don't fall away. Our times are going to come, but we should remember this fight is over with. Jesus wants us to have joy and we will have joy. And regardless of how the world takes joy in the sins and everything that it's going through, eventually the joyfulness is going to turn into the Spirit of God and that we will rejoice like a woman giving birth where there's all that pain and anguish and all those things. But at one point, the birth will have happened. We'll only have joy for that moment 
And from that time on, what I'm going to pray about is that I always keep my eyes focused on the fact that Jesus has already overcome the world, that this fight is over. I think it gets easy enough when you see tough times, either personally or in the world. Oh boy, to just lament. And you just have to remember that the world has already been overcome. And what I'm going to share with others, that the world has already been overcome. Jesus has already run this fight. I say it to people all the time when someone asks me, are you worried or are you stressed about this? And I say, you know what? I read the back page of the book and I know how this story ends. Sometimes it's easier to say than believe in your heart, but I want people to know that too, that their sorrows will turn to joy because we already know how this story ends. Everyone, thanks so much for listening to the podcast. I appreciate it greatly. Please remember to tell a friend about this podcast, share it with other people. After we get done with John, we're going to head into Acts and we're going to see what happens next. For the whole entire part of this podcast, we've been talking about these same years of Jesus. Now we're going to see, coming up shortly, what happens after this point. 